Hello and welcome back to Adventures Edge, Heroes of the Veil, Episode 3. One more time at the table, I have Rochelle. I'm Zinnia. Glow. I'm Bramble. Matt. Hello. Jeff. Tommy. And Thad. Drone. Say it again. Darun. Darun. I'll change it on you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, did, Darun. It'd be like episode 10 before I pronounce that correctly. And then I'm like, in four no. games. I'm just trying to keep it all in line, man. <laughs> Dorvan has 19 different dialects. He uses them all. Darun. I, and also, I still feel like we're in the early enough stage yeah. in the game where people's voices oh, may, may drift out. a little bit from week to week, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep working on it. It's actually in my skill, a skill of it. <laughs> That's what a linguistic means, right? That's what a linguistic <laughs> skill is, yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you haven't actually figured this out by now, we are an actual play Pathfinder first edition game with some homebrew rules. Uh, my name is Don, I'm the Game Master, and we're not going to spend a lot of time chit-chatting. I think we, we ran long the first two episodes. We're going to try to <laughs> dial this in. Yeah, and, uh, let's go. Yeah, we're, we're still tweaking things here. But uh, we are going to start with a player doing the recap. And I believe, Matt, you got nominated. Indeed. Um, So last time, after discovering the source of the plague, we learned that we needed three special ingredients to create a courier. Uh, Elder wood moss, which grows only by ancient trees. Iron bloom mushrooms that grow in areas that fade. They are not thread near forges and old uh, areas rich with iron. And pickled rat tail, which is a specially cured root that takes months to ready. Fortunately, I grew up right next to such a tree, and De Ruin is well traveled near old forges, and Tommy had heard of an old hag in the woods, Uzi Miller, or some other name close to that. After getting directions from loggers, we found ourselves at an enchanting clearing, and after it was filled with creepy figures that I have coined as scare fairies. Obviously, those had to go, and uh, after everyone was super comfy, we do one unanswered knock, followed by another, and then Tommy putting his whole body into the final knock got us inside, only to find out that the hag apparently has been dead for a really long time. The only question remaining is why is she still rocking in her chair? Why indeed? Because you are a bad person, Don. (laughs) (laughs) All right, uh, yeah, let's just pick it up, and we'll start with uh, Tommy as the person who started this thing. You, you're standing in the, the gloom. You've stirred up some dust and cobwebs. There's a creepy, dead-looking woman slightly rocking in the chair, <laughs> making the only noise in the room. Again, the centerpiece of this small cottage is a large cauldron, mm-hmm. and other than that, Hanging from the eaves are on like strings are like dried herbs and knuckle bones and other little fetishes and creepy things that you don't want to think about too much. And the walls are lined with shelves filled with dusty collectibles and a, a, a small number of books, but mostly jars of strange liquids and little floating animal heads and other things that you can explore at your leisure. Um, Everybody else is standing just outside the door. What would you like to do, Tommy? Uh, it's uh, come on in. It's clearish. Um, I will fly in right after Tommy, and I will um, cast light on the cauldron. You cast light on the cauldron. Uh, the large iron-looking cauldron and begins to illuminate the room. I still can't see anything. Oh, haha! Because. I did not reveal the area. Ah. Light. Oh, sorry, Tommy. I didn't mean to sit on your head. <laughs> hey, so, uh, um, you just want, want to be careful. The um, chair was rocking a bit when I came in, and it is not pleasant smelling in here. Um, do, you, do you think you could take a look through the jaws and see if she's got what we need? Doesn't look like she'll be using it. Okay. I, yeah, what do you want to do, Zinnia? So, yeah, Zinnia will start going through the shelves of jars looking, looking for the pickled root of rat's tail. All right. Bramble, what would you like to do while this begins? Um, I, will, I will also enter the uh, cabin 
um, and start looking around, seeing if there's any rat's tail and also if there happens to be any of the other ingredients that we need. Ooh, good idea, Bramble. I'll do the same thing. That's brilliant. Trunk, what would you like to do? I am still standing kind of outside looking at that chair <laughs> as it's slightly rocking. And I go, um, she's like gone, gone, not taking a break and going to get up and be all creepy, right? I noticed you're all looking at things instead of the thing <laughs> Well, that we should be looking at. No, so I, I was going to jump in. Um, the whole time they're looking, because I, 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 I don't know what those things look like. Um, I'm just going to be staring daggers at the chair. And as soon as anything happens, like her getting up or being angry with us, um, I am going to introduce her to Mama. Okay. Are you going to stay at the door? Or are you going to like go approach and look closer? I would like to be within striking distance. So it's pretty tight quarters. It's basically a 15 by 20 foot room. So three paces by four paces. There is a door to the western side, which must lead to an adjoining chamber. A large hearth to the eastern side. So for you to be within a striking distance, Tommy, yeah, you'll just basically have to kind of navigate around. Was is Zinnia is buzzing about the room looking at sure. things. Okay, I'll send Nipper back outside. It is tight in here. Darun, what are you going to be doing? Uh, stay, Corda. And uh, we'll have her sit outside. I'm going to step in, and as soon as I see this thing rocking, I will cast Spirit Sense to see if maybe perhaps she's a bit undead. Okay, you, you begin casting your Spirit Sense. Um, all right, then let's do this. Everybody that started searching, and we'll say including you, Tommy, since you're kind of assessing her, give me a perception check. Uh, they ruined your casting spirit sense. And then, so Trunk, you're Dick. basically at this point still just outside the door, looking easily over Darun into the room as people are starting to like rustle around and do things. Yeah, I guess I am probably most focused on looking for something surprising like being ready in case well frankly the hag decides to stop being dead <laughs> is my main concern <laughs> well go around here so zinnia what um what's your perception check since you kind of started 13 all right well there, I mean, there's a lot of things here yes there's so many <laughs> so many bottles and potions and Labels and things to read. It's so fascinating. Well, we'll have to have a supercut as you kind of uh, list off the contents of the room. <laughs> All right. So you're zipping around, looking around for something. Uh, I think, I don't know if we had a description, but I'm assuming that while you guys were walking, somebody described or at least had a little sketching of what you're looking for. So you're looking for those. Uh, Bramble, you've kind of made your way to the west side, checking that area. Uh, what did you come up with? Uh, a 22. 22. That's beautiful. All right. Yeah, you're going through the, the shelf that's really covered with the cobwebs over here and you're brushing. Are, are, you, are you touching anything? Uh, not yet, no. Okay. Zinni, are you touching it? No, I'm just flying around looking at stuff. All right. Bramble, you, you see some uh, over here in the corner promising section of, um, I mean, you see some actual pickles. <laughs> But you, there, there seems to be like a whole wall of of items floating in fluid that intrigues you. So you you can have you know continue studying those. Uh, trunk, not, nothing yet. Other than other than the the chair is still just gently rocking, whether of its own accord or a breeze that you can't feel. But um, so I remember from last time I had cast detect magic. Is that possibly still active? I I mean it could be. It's its concentration. Okay. Sure. Suspicious enough, I probably would maintain that. I mean, it's so. a cantrip, so you can just cast it again. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. Um, either way. Is there anything magical in the room, especially regarding the chair, that might explain why it's still moving? Yeah. It's, yeah. You, uh, you concentrate and dip your eyes into the, the flows of magic, and there are a number of small points of light in the room, but the chair itself does have some faint illumination like it's like the chair actually might have an enchantment on it 
Okay. Um, I sigh. But there's a, uh, you notice that there is a locket on her chest that is also enchanted. And that's like more enchanted. So that's probably what you would pick up on, you know, since you're kind of specifically looking at her. Uh, Tommy, what did you get? I got a 19. All right. So yeah, you've, uh, you, you're studying her carefully. She doesn't seem to be moving independently of the chair. She seems to have possibly died in the chair uh, quite some time ago. Okay. As best as you can tell, and had a blanket like wrapped pretty tightly around her. But she does have a very creepy looking amulet that is uh, around her neck and hanging there. And she's got like strands of gray hair that's sort of matted and hanging around her shoulders and mm-hmm. down around it. Okay. If uh, her position or condition changes, I'm ready to punch her. <laughs> ready for the to- lack for the lack of a better term. All right, that's that's fair. Um, it does look like apparently the chair is just magic to be super cozy, even after she is dead. Maybe not her doing it, but you know, be ready maybe to punch her in the face anyway. All right, Darune, you um, you do not detect any spirits. I think she's gone, gone. She's not undead. So it just might be that locket that's keeping her up. What's behind? Do I see this space over here? I ramble. Yeah, yeah. That, so that is a door. I will approach it. Has anybody checked inside here? No, not yet. Oh, you found a door? I found a door. Should I open it? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm going to open it. And I will open it. Okay. As you do. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I'll reveal what's beyond that room. You see, dimly illuminated by the glowing cauldron behind Ooh. you, uh, bedroom. There's a yeah, a dust covered bed, and looks like a small writing desk and a little washstand, and uh, the faint odor of a long, uh, unused latrine. I'll step in and observe the desk if there's anything on it. All right, you step in and. You notice right away that somebody's messing with the light because it just sort of like kind of flickers, you know, when somebody's like with a flashlight behind you yep. and it sort of illuminates. And Tommy, since you're most close, you're standing there watching Urzmela very closely and you hear kind of a, like a scraping noise from the cauldron. Punch her in the face. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for this to happen. He, he, he kind of pointed that out. And it was like, <laughs> so jacked up. As soon as I hear something, I can't explain. I'll give her just everything I got. Oh my god! Uh, well, give me, give me an attack roll there, Tommy. Trunk shouts and jumps back five feet. <laughs> it's an eleven. Okay. Do I get any kind of advantage or, or <laughs> extra bonus since she's a corpse? <laughs> <laughs> Sits, so she's just sitting there in the chair well i mean it is a it is functionally flat-footed you had a readied action okay. so you 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 definitely punch her hard you it, it's it's a sickening crunch you are very skilled at punching old dead grandmas <laughs> as you as you kind of cave in her her left jaw something like dust or whatever like just sort of spews out spews out of her mouth as her face malforms from, sure. the, from the impact and, and two things happen the uh a voice emanates like from her person in the moment i'm not sure if you would actually detect it but it, it's coming from the amulet and and you hear you hear this out and this happens at the same time because also in your peripheral the cauldron has moved and that's going to be its own thing. But while that is happening, the voice speaks. So I'm going to just read this because it's, it's loud sure. enough that everybody hears this. And it, it just says this really creepy hag-like voice, as you would mm-hmm. expect. You all hear, if you hear this, I am dead. Take what you will, but bury an old woman under her cherry tree. Beware the growing shadow. And then, semi-related, the cauldron lunges at you. Me? (laughs) Yes, at you. So this large iron cauldron, which is illuminated with with the the light, 
which is now kind of flickering wildly around the room. Sure. Just like you didn't see it before, but because it's, it's, it's a big cauldron and it has a lid on it. Like etched into the side of the cauldron was this like jagged maw that you really wouldn't notice if you studied it. It would have looked like, like a stylized design. Sure. Uh, it opens, revealing, you know, like if you were to sort of trace almost like a pumpkin. Okay. Imagine that, like where it's just like the teeth are it are the mouth basically because it's just iron. It opens up and like lunges into you into your space and attempts to like bite into your leg. Okay. Yeah. And you were definitely not expecting this from the cauldron. Uh so it lunges forward and I guess it, it's been a while since it's moved. So the first attack roll of the game is a natural one. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That yeah, that is that is excellent for for you. That that does trigger a fumble on its part. Okay, then it's it's kind of like bumps into you. It must must have been just the grime of tearing itself from the floor. You just hear the clatter as these the steel jaw clinks together, and um, you can react appropriately. Okay, what would you like to do? We'll toss Tommy the dragon. Tommy just got a. First player marker, little plush dragon yet to be named. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, I would like to turn and grab the chair I see next to the table. The, the toppled chair there. Yeah, and I would like to maybe like lion tamer this giant <laughs> cauldron, <laughs> just like keep it at distance. <laughs> okay, so you. <laughs> You pick up the chair, and you're basically going to try to, well, total defense is normally a full round action. So you you grab the chair, and you're going to basically do a total defense with the chair as an improvised weapon. Yeah. We're going to learn, learn Tommy's fighting styles. Okay, Deroon, um, standing where you're at, you hear a small commotion behind you as you're standing there looking at this adjoining chamber, and you kind of spin around. You see that the uh, the cauldron is like shifting about, mm-hmm. and I don't know that you necessarily fully appraised the situation mm, yet, but no. uh, it seems to be trying to move move after Tommy, who's grabbed a chair. Mm. What would you like to do? I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily have my weapon ready, right? Because I'm not uh, expecting this. Yeah, you've not declared such, so so I would definitely use my first action to just to. Uh, to grab my hammer and say, this thing's got to break at some point. So I will grab my hammer and take a five foot step towards the cauldron. That's my turn. Well, well you could actually still make an attack because uh, I assume your base attack bonus is a zero. Yes. Okay. So you drawing your weapon as a move action, Okay. but you can still do, it's that's move equivalent. Sure. So you can still take a five foot step and as your standard Gladly. action, still make an attack. Gladly I'll, I'll take that. So you whip, whip out your war hammer and... Swing it at this cauldron. That's a 13 to hit. 13 to hit. All right. Your, um, your hammer clings loudly off the side of the cauldron, um, but you, uh, you, you think it must have been deflected. Oh, so it sounds like Hell's Bells. Great. Hell's Bells indeed. And then I'm going to call for Corda. Corda, get in here, girl. Attack. Okay, that's my turn. I mean, she she goes on mine, so I don't know if she would have. She so she would. Mm-hmm. Now this is a this is not a normal creature, so you would have to push for to to attack. Which actually you'll have to. Make what do you it. mean push? Uh, animal companions don't norm, won't normally attack uh, mm-hmm. like supernatural creatures oh. without a animal check. Oh well, okay. because I have she, that's one of her her tr- tricks. So yeah, yeah. Yep. So you'll you will still have to make oh, a, okay. uh, an animal a, check a command. Sure. Of 18. We're just going to go with it. That's a pretty good roll. I don't have the DC in front of me, but so Corda will leap by trunk. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically just go leaping into the room. She and, might, could it have to be five foot step? Could she, could she grab it there? Would that be okay? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. So Corda, Corda runs into the room, getting next to you, and you are directing Corda to bite at this iron cauldron. In trip it if it can. <laughs> We'll see. Uh, that's no Corda. Oh, Corda. That's not a hit. That's, okay. like, that's, that's a seven. So Yeah. So I imagine Corda doesn't really know. Exactly. You're like, <laughs> no. you're telling it to attack this cauldron. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Now that's my turn. All right. 
Zinnia, you you were kind of in the the northeast corner of the room, flitting about. Tommy has grabbed the chair that was next to you and is lion taming this cauldron, which you see looks to be somewhat threatening. And what would you like to do? Um, I would like to um cast acid splash on it. Oh, lovely. Okay, so you summon up a little ball of acid and toss it at the cauldron. I believe that is a ranged touch attack. Uh, sixteen. That will be a hit. So sizzling acid sprays across the side of the cauldron. Mm. For one point. (laughs) Gotta start somewhere. Yep, you see a small bit of the the iron sizzling away. Take that! (laughs) Bramble, you were in the, um, uh, you were in the other side of the corner next to Darun, who stepped up next to you with a hammer. So you're a bit pinned in between the rocking caved-in head hag and Darun, and, so, and the cauldron. So there's really no space for you to move to. What would you like to do? Um, I will take out my sling. Okay. And I will try to hit the cauldron, I guess, in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> As one would. Yeah. Stop it from chomping at people. Okay, because you are adjacent to it, mm. and uh, so with a ranged weapon, you would be provoking an attack from the cauldron. Oh. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm. If you think that's your best, best weapon, though, this is how you learn. This doesn't seem right. Also, uh, as an aside, I'm assuming you don't have precise shot? No. Okay. So firing into melee, where the, an opponent has your allies next to it, uh, puts you at minus four to that attack too. So it's it is a very suboptimal attack option. I I will give you a moment to pause and consider the situation, and you think perhaps what do you want to pursue? Um, I I could try headbutting it. <laughs> you have headbutt. I do have headbutt. There's your answer. I mean, all right. When in doubt, oh, I headbutt. Love it. So we you, have one person playing lion tamer and the other person <laughs> doing the other role. <laughs> All right, so you you pull your sling out, realize at the last second, this may not be ideal, and you do what fawns do, and uh, you headbutt it. So roll that, roll that headbutt dimension. It's, it's, it's an eight. Okay. Um, yeah, so you're, yeah, this, you were all very unexpected. So you, that, perhaps that pause just put you uh, at a disadvantage there and you, you try to get in and it's just moving around and the lights are kind of crazy and you do not make contact with it. Trunk, while you might have been thinking perhaps things were going to happen a different way, you're standing safely out just outside the door, but albeit within a five foot step reach of this cauldron. What would you like to do? I uh, glance at Nipper and so we should just go back home, and this was a bad idea, yeah? <laughs> Nipper nods at you. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I guess I step into the room, and apparently the thing to do against giant cauldrons is beat it with something, so that's what I'll do. <laughs> I'll take a whack at it. I uh, guess. As good as ours. Um, what are you using? I mean, I prefer my spear, but stabbing metal with a spear seems questionable so i'll just clunk it with my staff <laughs> all right uh, you, yeah, that is gonna be a 19 to hit Ooh, we've got impact as your staff hits it readily with a loud clang uh give me some damage on that okay um quarter staff reads that it's a double weapon i don't know what that means but we'll start with uh seven points of damage um, so basically that means if you get, uh, when you, when you get a second attack option, gotcha. that's your base attack, then you can attack with both sides or if you get two up and fighting. For now, uh, I am a single clunker. A single clunker. Well, you clunk it well. It probably has somewhat the effects you would expect. It seems to be resilient against your clunking to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, but you actually, you give it a wallop and you seem to give it a little bit of a dent. It is its turn. And it still seems intent upon doing Tommy some harm, perhaps maybe as a, a form of retribution to your somewhat I was startled. <laughs> I think the cauldron was her dog. Uh, well, these things happen. They, they do happen. 
Uh, yeah, so it definitely is kind of pushing forward and doing its best to take a bite out of you. Oh, I saw that 20 flip up, but then it did not land. Uh, that is only going to be a 13. What is your AC, Tommy? Uh, 18. 18. Okay. And, uh, after, after this round, if you continue to do total offense, then that will be, that'll give you a plus four to that. Or, okay. or where did you already add that? Oh, uh, I didn't. Wow. You've got a good AC. All right. Then it is, uh, yeah, it's still ineffectually trying to, uh, trying to take a chomp out of you, but you've got, you, you're holding the chair now. <laughs> do you want to stay defensive or do you want to? No, now that it's been decided that we are going to attack it, I'll just hit it with the chair. <laughs> All right. So this will be an improvised weapon. Now, do you already have any feats that give that? No. And then we talked about a feat tree for you. Yeah. It, that hasn't been put into effect yet. Okay. All right. So you're going to smash the chair at it. Uh, probably not. <laughs> I rolled a two. <laughs> probably not indeed. All right. Well, um, you know, it's, it's an unusual situation and you, you miss. Uh, <laughs> does, the, does the chair shatter? <laughs> uh, no, you don't, you don't connect with it. All right. Unexpectedly so. Uh, so Derun. You've got your hammer in hand. Mm -hmm. Everybody else seems to be circling this, this uh, crazy cauldron. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. um, I will drop the hammer because it's just a one-handed hammer I'm doing right now. If I could use it as a free action to cast a spell. Yeah, you, you can drop your weapon as a free action. I mean, you don't... And I will cast Expedition, Expeditious Excavation and create a five-foot cube hole underneath. Oh, interesting. So you have to make a reflex save or you're prone inside. So a couple things. Yeah. Uh, you, you wouldn't have to drop the hammer just okay. for the record. Okay. You didn't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, however, I, are you oh, reading the spell description? Yeah, yep. Sorry. Yes, I, will, I will cast Acid Maw on Korda. Okay. Yeah. Expedition. Uh, that I requires yeah, yeah. dirt. I just read. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I, I, really, I really liked that thought. Yeah. It's not a dirt floor that you're saying. That's my, that's my turn. Go get her. So still gripping your hammer. Mm. Now, again, casting a spell adjacent to an opponent does provoke unless okay. you cast defensively. Which means I have a, de a, uh, a chance of failure. Okay, let's do that defensively. Let's teach the people what that means. All right, so you're going to roll <laughs> and you're going to basically make a caster level check against okay. 15 plus twice the level of the spell. So level uh, spell one. So, uh, so you're and gonna, then plus my you're, ability. Yeah, you're gonna roll. You're gonna add your ability and your uh, your level. So it'd be fifteen would be the ability because it's I have a plus four in my wisdom. So and ten. So ten plus four plus one. Right? Is that how that's done? Well, you you roll. Sure. Just roll twenty. You roll a d twenty and you add your ability score and your level. Okay. So it's five, uh, eight, uh, seventeen. No, eighteen. Sorry. 18. 18. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Because I would have been 18. A... <laughs> we got there. We, <laughs> yeah, we <did>. got there. <laughs> We're all learning. <laughs> Which I'm so confused. Like you. Yeah. So what happens when you juggle systems? You're like you've been playing. Oh, don't right? even... Yeah, I know. But still, <laughs> that was a quasi quasi spellcaster. <laughs> all right. Acid Maw is an effect on. Uh... And then she will attack. Perfect. Okay. And that's going to be a 18 to hit. That is a hit. And she, her bite. And then she will do a trip attack too. I don't know if that really does anything, but um, her, her actual bite does six points of damage and she does two points of acid damage. And she trips on a successful attack. So I don't know what that means in this case. I don't think this thing can be tripped. Yeah. Because it's not, not standing on legs. It doesn't roll over. <laughs> I mean, I can push a cauldron over and grill it. They generally don't come with teeth, though. So yes. yeah, True. generally, right? You have to get the nice model, <laughs> right? Right. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, whatever I, damage is done. Yeah, I got that. I got to. Yeah, still, uh, the acid definitely definitely made a difference on that. Okay. Uh, all right. Back to Zinnia. So Zinnia will do another acid splash because hmm? <laughs> <laughs> acid seems to be affecting it. Who 
that's a 19. That is a hit, so you spray some more acid. Well, it's actually a 25 with all my, you know. For one point of acid damage. All right. (laughs) Bramble. Um, To a four points of acid damage. (laughs) We might be here a little while. We're getting there. We might well, be this here. is first level people. This is not like, you know, we're not fifth level here. All right, Bramble. Um, what uh, what you got? Uh, I, again, am going to try to headbutt the cauldron. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And that is a seven. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, oh, I missed it with a chair. So... <laughs> Oh, well. So don't feel bad. It's not like you've had a bunch of a whole lot of people in your life. Well, you know, it's not doing any better. So let's we'll be <laughs> yeah. fair about this. So <laughs> there's a lot of chaos. I imagine everybody's sort of bustling around as this cauldron is like stomping around on his four caster feet. And then uh, uh, we're back to uh, Trunk. I will try for another clunk. Uh, that is going to be, yep, no base attack bonus there. So uh, a 14. A 14 hits. All right. Perfect. Clink. Uh, for four points of damage. <laughs> oh, this is a this is a brutal actual opening fight. I will I will admit. Yeah, you uh, you're gonna have to really put your put your back into it. So it it still it still seems to be very intent on Tommy, although it is a, whatever awareness it has seems to be growing about the other people clunking around. But it is still gonna bite at you, Tommy. Sure. So. My goodness, dice are cold. I think it's time to put some dice in gel already. Yeah, yeah so it, uh, you somehow managed to still be keeping it at bay with, uh, with your chair. I'm actually going to throw my die and dice gel or out on the table. It's, no, yeah, it's time to get another die here. Oh, that was just hot as hell last time you were rolling it. Well, I don't know if that was the die. <laughs> oh, I don't know so if you've that got was like it. five black dice. Yeah, they all look the same. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You are ejected from the game, buddy. To the bench. All right. Then we are back to you, Tommy. So as the surprise of this cauldron kind of wears off, what I'd like to do is take a little bit of a step to my left. So to put me across from the dwarf. All right. Uh, and then I would like to try to hit with this chair. I've made my mind up and I'm going to accomplish it. All right, so you are now flanking it with Darun, so you do get a plus two to your attack. That's solid. It's a 19, so that's um, a, a 20. All right, and it is going to be minus four for an improvised weapon. I, I did. That's fa- already factored that in. That Look at you go. In. Nice. All right, so that is a solid blow as you crash the, the chair down on its iron head. Okay. And uh, what would be the damage? Something like this. I believe it is. That's going to be D4, I believe. D4 okay. plus strength. You've got some muscles, right? I do. Uh, so that would be seven points of damage. Very nice. All right. The, uh, yeah, the, the, the chair definitely cracks loudly and starts to come apart, but uh, it is not fully broken yet. You dent in. Some of its head. You, you still think that it is a, you know, it's resistant to, seems to be just about everything except for the acid. It's resistant to chairs, is what you're saying. It is, but uh, it now, ha- it is definitely pockmarked and dented. So it is not like you guys are being helpless against it. <laughs> and nobody's actually been injured yet, other than some pride. Oh, someone's. <laughs> so why so, would you say that? Right. <laughs> why would you say it's going to chew my hand off. <laughs> All right, Dayroom. Uh, yeah, you've now got some uh, flank. Yeah, inspired by my friend here with the table, I'm going to try again with the hammer. So that's a plus two, right? Yeah. A 14. Perfect. That's exactly what you needed, All you think. right. Cling. Now we can cling. Uh, that's four points of damage. And then uh, Godra is going to bite again with her acid maw. That's a D4 on, my, on that other turn, so that's just two acid damage for the beginning, because she takes the next round, she takes another D4 damage, or it, sorry. Um, oh, it persists. Yes. Well, okay, so that's... That's two right off the top, and okay. then her bite, she's going to bite again, and I don't know if she got, that's uh, 13, because she's not flanking, so uh, she, she just, just misses. Just misses it, yeah. So that's her turn. 
Okay. Um, would you see that acid is so in that last you said for four rounds? The next, just the next, just round. the next round. Yeah, yeah, perfect. She has to be succeed. You know. Okay, Zinnia. I'm just kind of surprised at all this acid here you guys have. That's great. Well, Zinnia's gonna just really, really, really think that this time it's gonna be better than one acid damage. Is the alternative two? Are you basically no? Here? I it it can be up to three. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yes, that's a 25 to hit. That is a decided hit. See, my aim is good. And that is, that's three, that's three. Three acid three damage. Three acid right. damage. Look at that. It is, it is, it is definitely sizzling away now. Sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, it is actually taken quite a bit of damage. It is still very functional. But you feel like perhaps you guys are making some some progress in doing this cauldron in. I do a little spin in the air. All right. Uh, are you speaking of? I you know I had been kind of a little lax on the fly checks. Are you just hovering? Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> I, I mean I know what your fly skill is. I actually don't think that you can fail because you technically have to make. A fly check to hover as your move action. Okay. But it's a DC 15, and I'm pretty sure you're like at a plus. More plus than 16. That. Yeah. You actually, I don't think you can fail. Okay. So note to self. All right. Then we are back to the headbutting bramble. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do again is I'm going to headbutt it or at least try go, to. Go, bramble, so. go. No. No. <laughs> Not even. Perhaps you should try the dragon. <laughs> it's it's even worse than the last time. So um. But it's not a fumble. <laughs> no, no, it's a it's it's a two. You're a positive one, Zinnia. <laughs> uh, you didn't fall into the cauldron. Yay! That's true. It looks like it could just like eat you up. Yeah. But it doesn't. All right. Well, then we are we're back to trunk. All right. Um, at the moment, I glance up, see Zinnia's. It's sizzling and it's spinning and it, it's cute when it's a cauldron. I'm afraid she's going to do that when it's a people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will hit it again. Um, that is going to be a 14, thanks to flanking with Bramble. That is a hit for six. All right. You, yeah. The, the dents are much less than you would desire. You think at this rate it may take a take a few more rounds of beating on this thing but i've grown up on legends that the fey have issues with iron things so this does not surprise me <laughs> that is a good point yeah it probably would actually that much iron would probably make you a little uncomfortable well maybe not you so much the other fey <laughs> <laughs> wow you said it <laughs> this is going to be a pattern <laughs> my cheer in the world will just continually degrade <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> You've been accepted by the Fae, so therefore you are the Fae. All right. It is, uh, we are back to uh, Rosmila's Cauldron. So it has clearly not had any success at uh, taking down the Lion Tamer Tommy. So it gives up? Hmm. I think it's, I think it's going to maybe take a, take a chomp out of somebody. Well, we're going to, we're going to see. It's not really operating with the greatest strategy. So I'm going to, I'm just going to roll the dice here and see. Uh, it is, it's, you know what, it's going to kind of pivot around. And since Bramble keeps putting their head like <laughs> right up, like right up next to it. Ah, it's one rude, rude perhaps, cauldron. Perhaps you presented yourself as a target of opportunity. Yeah, not mechanically, but stylistically. And it's going to try to chomp you, Bramble. Oh my gosh. There we go. I rolled a natural three, which I'm Yay. confident comes nowhere near. Your, your first level AC. No, I I am okay. <laughs> if you're out there listening to this and imagine this battle, we apologize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. Part of I, me, I, is, I, part of me is beginning to think that we're not. It's not actually animated. It just started rolling <laughs> around. And we're like, ah! <laughs> we just think <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> we're all just so freaked out. We're beating up a completely inanimate color. Yeah, we haven't checked if this thing is actually trying to attack us. Yeah, I like that so much. I really like that so much. Uh, 
We heard it was going to be a dangerous, but oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I thought this cauldron was going to be more terrifying than it. I mean, you guys are probably amped up. Uh, we are back to Tommy, though. So um, I look at the chair. I'm a little disappointed. It didn't do more damage. So I glance to my right, and I see the table. <laughs> And so what I would like to do is pick up the table and use that instead of the chair. All right. So as a free action, you drop the chair. As your move equivalent, you pick up the small, t- it's a small table, like a, like a little two person chair, sure. or in this case, really just a one person table. Um, it had some like old plates and stuff that were there and it, you just, you pick it up, whatever's on there clatters to the floor and uh, with a good over, like over the shoulder, heave, smash. Yes. Uh, that would be seven. I assume I'm not proficient in tables <laughs> as a weapon. <laughs> Should have kept up that training on the chair. <laughs> At one point, you will be. Just follow your feet tree. <laughs> Someday, so, even you two can fight with tables. But, you know, maybe the cauldron doesn't have a great armor class. Um, it, it's better than a seven. Oh yeah. Why is that a seven? Like twice is better. Minus four. Plus and then two. I'll get two. Mm-hmm. So it's an eight. Mm. Ooh. Did I tip the scales? Oh. Watch out, so, so close. All right. Yeah. So I've seen you Cold. attack with a chair, a table, a second chair. <laughs> I look over. Remember when we were going to get our things before leaving town? <laughs> Did you forget something? <laughs> just, just warming up. All right, give me a moment. Well, uh, I mean, so Derune, uh, to his credit, he is still flanking it and threatening it. So it's giving you the opportunity to use a proper weapon. Am <laughs> yes. I feel like I'm doing anything to it, or just you've you have retaining it? You've you've done it some. Okay, we'll go again. I mean, so that's going to be a 14 again. Again, a hit. And that's going to be seven points of damage from the Warhammer. And Kodra is going to do a natty 20. Oh, so Kodra, uh, this is where we like homebrew rules. Yeah. So that is going to be max damage. Okay, so that's going to be. Uh, Gotta go cut back and forth as animal companion. Um, and the exciting pause. It's a uh, seven points of damage. Okay. And then acid damage. I don't know if that's full damage too. Uh, excellent Is question. Uh, no, that's added at the end. Okay. So, so, so seven bite. Yep. Um, and then four acid. Wow, that's fantastic. Oh, it is max damage. And then you get to roll to confirm your crit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. That was a, a 19 to hit. Awesome. So then you just roll, uh, roll your damage again. I will take this. I like this idea. The acid only adds the first time. but Yeah, I got you. Four points. Okay. Oh, that is a... So a bite, bite. So Coder gets in there and is trying to... I'm probably still trying to go after the trip thing. Maybe grabs onto one of its little, mm-hmm. you know, stumpy legs and just like rips, rips that off. To kind of throw it off a of balance, tears it off. That that's appreciable damage. Uh, you feel like you've actually just really uh, moved along. Good so. girl, Kodra. Uh, it is not incapacitated yet, however. Uh, so Zinnia, feeling encouraged that perhaps you guys will prevail against the cauldron. <laughs> yes. I, I shall. I this shall. will be cut into two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Acid splash again. <laughs> That's wonderful. 22. This will make the next week's summary <laughs> really simple. Find out if the cauldron <laughs> dies next episode. <laughs> Another three damage. Oh, uh, you have now officially like sizzled some holes in it. Nice. Uh, it seems to be weakening. And you think that perhaps a few more good, good blows is going to maybe get it to stop moving. You've got this. The mighty the Bramble. The yes. Come on, Bramble. <laughs> Take, taking like the... the... It's, it's a 14. Plus two. Plus two, so that's 16. 
I see. It just it took you to kind of draw its interest. It took that that snap at you. You're like face to face with it, and you just it's almost like you're you're stepping off the line in football and just like straight into its face with your head. And that is three points of damage. Okay. Well, you think it probably hurt you more than than you (laughs) hurt it? Uh, You you realize iron is in fact quite hard. Yeah. But it makes contact. Yeah. You have contact. (laughs) There's a lot of the loud pair of clinks as your horns wrap into the side. Bramble has a very hard head. Mm. I do. I do indeed. All right, Trunk. Right. Bottom of the round. Continuing. Um, that's a 14 again. That's, that's a hit again. Uh, for nine points of damage this time. Wow. Is that your max? That's pretty good. It might be my maximum. <laughs> you, you really, that was your best dent. Like right there on its on its the top of its head, smacked it in. It seems to be wobbling a bit, as if it might be just imminently about to give up whatever ghost is inhabiting this creature. But it's going to get I, at least one more final attempt. I'm pretty sure this might be its last attempt here. So we're going to have it go against Darun. Oh, very good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and there's a natty twenty to take take us home. Oh, no. Look at that! Let's take who home? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Raven, do you remember that dwarf we used to travel with? <laughs> okay, <laughs> the one we lost in a cauldron. <laughs> I'm gonna roll to confirm this crit here. All right, mm. we do not confirm the crit, but it is gonna be max damage. So that is going to be nine damage as it oh. chomps onto you. Good thing I've got toughness. And then it is going to try to grab you. Ooh. And that is going to be a pretty solid grab. Um, what is your CMD? My CMD is a plus two. So I do roll then? Or? No, no, no. Your, your CMD should be calculated. Oh, uh, two then. <laughs> or t- uh, 12. Okay. You are grabbed. So How dare you. Yeah. So it chomps down hard. Pain goes through, it probably gets you like right in the upper thigh, and you just feel these iron teeth just like pinching on you like a vice. And uh, it looks like it wants to like swallow you. We'll see what it does next turn if it gets that opportunity, because we are back to the mighty, mighty Tommy. All right. Uh, I try to hit with the table. <laughs> Tommy, save him. Uh, yeah, so that's a 14. That's table smash. There you go. What's the damage on a table? Is it like oak or balsa wood? I mean, it make a difference. Yeah. You know, well... We- a balsa wood table. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst table ever. I know, right? <laughs> you know what, Tommy? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a D6 on the table. Oh, nice. Oh, right. At least for the first attack with it. So that is seven damage, table damage. Seven table damage. If it's resistant, I just want to be specific. It, 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 well, it is, it is definitely resistant to pretty much all damage. Okay. All right. Well, you, uh, Tommy, you ring the cauldron's bell. You think it's on perhaps its very last little drip here. And as that acid sizzles in? Yeah. I mean, I would like my turn to cast Cure Wounds on myself. <laughs> <laughs> And then she can go ahead and make an attack. So that would be a 1d4 damage at the beginning of the attack, which would be two points of acid damage on it. Okay. That's what I was really looking for. Okay. was the beginning of the turn. Yeah. Because that, that triggers automatically. Sure. So you're kind of being, you know, jerked around as... Yeah, the, it hurts. Uh, yeah, it hurts a lot. Yeah. And you, the, you see that that acid sizzles through one more vulnerable spot, mm-hmm. and the cauldron takes like... Like one more, like last little squeeze on you, and then you just you feel it just be, goes inert as it just sort of shifts and stops moving. With you kind of still in its maw, yeah. I'm still going to cast cure wounds on myself because it, that that smarts, and because I can. Are we out of battle then? <laughs> we are out of oh, battle. Oh. Do we count full health on the healing? Is are we playing that rule or not? We are. Okay, very yeah, good. We are. What a gracious DM, huh? You know, I give. I'm a Yeah, I'm that, a that, that 20 was a give. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. You're, hey, so 
He didn't confirm it. That was good. Yeah, it was very gracious. The <laughs> grab too. No, oh, it, it it goes. I mean, I, I, assume that, it goes. I, I assume that was a pretty good chunk of your hit points. Yeah, I had toughness as my. Oh. Otherwise, I'd be dead. Or yeah, dead yeah, zero, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it happens first. But I'm going to go ahead and rub my upper thigh. All right. Well, you can all take a breath as you are probably still brandishing your weapons, waiting to see if this thing moves further. Maybe somebody else just opts to keep beating on it. Or... With a table. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 all right. Tommy, you give it another good blow with that table before the table splinters in your hands. Sweet Lord. What was that? <laughs> yeah. What? Why would the cauldron attack us if she said to bury her? Like well, I don't know if something happened with uh, when he punched her. Um, allegedly, I punched her. Right, I don't think. <laughs> oh, actually, I didn't see that, so I just heard someone say, well, "What are you doing, Tommy?" Anybody, said anybody it. who looks at her like sitting, like leaning out of the chair <laughs> with like half the head Jogga. caved in. Well, unconsciously, I'll rub my hand on my shirt yeah. to rub off the dead <laughs> yeah. hag. I don't, I don't remember doing it. It didn't happen. Oh, uh, so nice. maybe we should bury her. Yeah, Subject no. change. What's with the uh, little? Was the, you said that the uh, little necklace was something important? The amulet. I mean, it talked to us, so yeah. <laughs> I mean. It warned us, Do we too. bury it said, with her? It said, beware the shadow. So I'm assuming that is the name of the little Shadows pot that tried cauldron. to attack us. Um, well, it said, beware the growing shadow. So... It got bigger, I'm pretty sure. It's just <laughs> all about it. Well, I, I'm, going, I'm going to cast Detect Magic on the amulet now. Is it still? It is, it is still magical. Okay, and so then... then and you I... notice that it actually has... Changed slightly. Okay. And then I'm going to try using, you know, like seeing if I can understand the magic. I try to understand the magic. Okay. So that is going to be a spellcraft check. So while you are doing your spellcraft, Bramble, what are you going to do? Um, I guess I am going to uh, take a breath and then uh, continue searching the, the pickle wall <laughs> to see if I can yes. uh, find anything. Okay. I will grab that shovel and start digging under the tree. Nice. Okay. So you, uh, you head out under the, the lawn to get the shovel. And I look at the tree. Now you stay put. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, what are you going to do while this is happening? Uh, I would like to place the chair in the table back where I found them. <laughs> <laughs> as best as possible. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not going to spend all day mending that. <laughs> and Zinnia, um, are you thinking maybe we take the amulet or? Well, I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure out what they, what it is. Sure. Well, it's just, um, we're going to need to grab her. Did you want to take it off or do you want Not to... until I know what it is. Oh, easy. I'm just asking a question. And I'm going we're... outside to help yeah. this guy shovel. That was my question. So, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Actually, I'm going to use one of my, I'm going to use. Expedition, ex expeditious excavation, and help out a little bit. I pull the shovel back and I go, <laughs> foo, and a giant five <laughs> hole. I am I'll really just, good at just this. Just to start it, you know. I'm keeping this shovel. <laughs> I don't know if we can fold her over or, you know, we have to keep digging. Maybe you could go take the broken pieces of the table and chair and like frame it out into some kind of structure. So, like a coffin? Yeah, yeah. I roll. Um, I won't do that. Okay. So you're going to take the debris of your... Uh, okay, so you're going to grab that up. You guys start digging the hole. Bramble, you... Um, go ahead and give me, give me a nature check to identify the ingredients. Let's see. That's 19. That's 24. All right. As you finish your surveying of the jar of pickled goods, you do see quite a few of these strange little pickled rat's tails. There's at least half a dozen there, which, since you do have the, the ingredients list, uh, which I believe is still uh, Dayruin has, you're pretty sure that that is, that is about what you needed for the big batch. So you can opt to gather those up together. Yes. All right. Then, um, Zinnia, yeah, you've, you finished examining that, um, 
And what was your, sorry, what was your 21. 21. Got it. Sorry, I had a picture of it and it is not opening for you for some reason. So you'll have to see it next time. It is actually pretty creepy. <laughs> it is an, the amulet has like a little face on it. Ooh. And the little face, uh, its eyes were previously open and they are now closed. Hmm. But what it does basically, you determine that you can, it's almost like a little magic mouth. You can speak a message into it and it'll trigger and recite that message. Oh. Which basically you think that she put in her last words. And when there's a message waiting, the eyes are open. And once the message has been spoken, they close. So whatever trigger she had, you guys collectively triggered, or somebody did, you can point fingers, but probably when maybe Tommy interacted with her. I think there's only one finger that needs to be pointed. I don't know why <laughs> we need to all point at Tommy at the same time. Okay. But that, that's what you do. I mean, I interacted positively yeah. <laughs> based on my memory. You were saying over and over again, if this thing moves, I'm going to punch it in the face. <laughs> or it might have been when the door opened to the bedroom or Absolutely. When we don't oh, know. Oh. It's fine. But so it seems like we can take the necklace. It doesn't seem cursed. It does not seem to be cursed. Okay. It seems like it might be useful. Sure. Yeah. But it seems like it might be a little big for me. Um, Give it to the bard. She's. I can carry it. He's okay. good with birds. There you go. Thank you. You can sing to it. <laughs> And then tell it to do its thing and harmonize with yourself. That would be very, very cool, actually. That would be an interesting use of that item. <laughs> okay. Or you can make awful sex noises. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. No. You fey are a bit weird. Even the ones who are not fey. I mean, fey. <laughs> no. Once the uh, necklace is removed or take the corpse... And uh, put it in the coffin that we've made, uh, and then work on burying it. This, this is what well, you don't need to work on the burying. We've got it. I know. You, I mean, if you want to take your shirt off just to shovel, that works too. But eh, I don't need it's appropriate or needed. All right, a bit touchy. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, did I hurt your feelings? No, <laughs> not at all. Okay, well, um. Okay, so it sounds like, yeah, so you have a plan. You 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 excavate. You shovel between the lot of you. Then you you get a properly constructed, I guess, coffin sort of thing. Was there anything on the desk inside? Well, y- y- yes, we could probably get to the assume the requisite looting after the. Oh, well, this is more about is there pa- parchment paper? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're still learning <laughs> about that. I'm on a limited bu- budget, all right. <laughs> I mean, the woman needs the magical necklace in order to talk to people. I don't think she has things to write on. Maybe she likes to draw. She might have notes about, like, other remedies right. or other, you know, other useful things that, um, that the lady... Or at, the shadow. Or the shadow. Ooh, shadow. that's a good thought, Darun. Um, but before we get to that, maybe, maybe Bramble wants to say a few nice words. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I uh I go to stand where she is and I uh, basically I just say I know we don't know you very well but or at all or 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 at all um but I hope that you rest well. Thank you for giving us th- your stuff. Yes, this this is going to help a lot of people. Okay, bye-bye now. <laughs> um sorry that I Punched your corpse in the face. <laughs> Anybody else have any final words? No. All right, we have a we have a solemn moment out there under the Perhaps cherry I'll tree. I'll take one of her flowers from her garden and, <laughs> and throw it in there. Just thinking about what Trunk said at the beginning. <laughs> well, Trunk said that to himself. He did. Uh, we he didn't did. hear it. <laughs> he probably maybe looks aghast or who knows. I don't know what the goings on <laughs> of witches and flowers and gardens. All right. Well, then you, uh, you've, you complete the burial rituals. You've acquired the first ingredient of three. Huzzah. Huzzah, indeed. And it sounds like perhaps you're going to root around. To see if there's anything of value in this place. Uh, or useful. Root around. <laughs> useful. Yes. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and you do. Let's you see. do find a bit of treasure to uh, reward yourselves for this, your first success and near-death experience. So you do find some parchments. She, she, she was not a prolific writer, but she did do some writing. But that works um, for her. I'd rather have blank parchment than, you know. Uh, yeah, so there, um, there are some uh, a quill pen and some, some ink and, uh, yeah. A, a, a small sheaf of parchment that you can take to replenish Cute. your diminishing supply. You also find, assuming that you kind of, I don't know if you're going to work together, people, you know, doing some detection and whatnot, because I mean, Trunk, you did originally pick yeah, up I've on a few of the things. magic. She's got detect magic. Yeah. <laughs> we can detect magic. Uh, you first. do find a pouch of essential salts that you can use in the summoning familiar ritual. It will reduce the cost to summon a familiar if you are able to do such a thing. Uh, you also find there are two books of potentially some interest. There's a book called Candle Magic, and there's another book called Charms and Minor Magics. So I don't know who may take those. I have more details about the contents of it, assuming you'll do some light reading to add that to your collection. And well, go ahead. You were gonna... I was going to say Charms and what? Minor Magics. Charms and Minor Magics. Well, if you don't mind here. Corner loves to carry books around. She's got her little side saddle bags, and they're empty right now except for a couple things. All right. And then there, there, there are some sundries. I, I like to list things off because I don't know what may intrigue people. It's one of those things that eh, it, most people might think they're junk. But uh, there's, like, there's a bolt of linen. Like perhaps she was going to sew something. Like they, that does have some value. You do find a bottle of good wine. There's some candles. Like some like a clay pitcher and tanker. There's a there's a flint and steel. I guess somebody needed mm-hmm. one of those. Uh there's a hammer. There's a, a lamp, like an oil lamp. Some sewing needles. And uh, actually, she actually had I specified nine vials of ink. Oh, like she had a lot of ink. So yeah. perhaps she was used to write things and distribute it. Yeah, take some of those. Uh, absent of. You know what you were hoping to find, though you don't. Uh, you don't locate like a journal or anything, though. Mm. So that that is what you find. Uh, there are other like non magical ingredients that I can provide you if you're going to start collecting things. You start getting um, recipes, perhaps in the future. So I can give that to you off air. I do have a question for for the Fae. You seem to react differently with with these scarecrows up. What was she protecting herself from from Fae? Or I don't know. It would make sense. She dwelled in the Fey Wood and wanted to keep us at bay, so, you know, kind of wigged Fey out a bit. I actually didn't really notice anything, so... Mm. You just felt sick or something? Y- yes, for me it was very um, off-putting, to say the least. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what the purpose was of them was obviously some sort of protection but i mean it was a little icky but and you feel better now yes i do all right well that whole process probably took you a good hour of i mean looting and burying and and you know respectfully dealing with that stuff so you will have to consider your options now because at this point it's 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 about four in the afternoon you think that you might be able to get to the 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 tree maybe by dark or after dark i don't know about that should we set camp here how when does it get dark in when the, the sun in the goes forest? away yes i know that but there are trees to stop the sun from coming in uh you figure you've got about three hours of light how far are we from home it's about a three hour well at this point three and a half hour hike home i mean to the fey village oh um that's actually pretty far too yeah, you couldn't. You won't get home by dark. Mm. You, you know, while we haven't really discussed it, you also think that bringing outsiders into the village would be pretty starkly frowned on. Oh, why? Yeah, uh, Tommy's a nice guy. Is it the beard? Well, that would be a position that that most Fae would have. Is that you know. The humans live over there, we live over here. They chop some trees down, we mess with them a bit, but yeah, you, you live separate lives. I mean, that would be just second nature. You, 
you're you're a bit more whimsical in your, your you know the way you approach things and sort of take residence um, amongst them out of curiosity. But. No reason to to ruffle the fey feathers. Well, you say the tree's a bit ominous. Um, do I know of any other like old ancient trees that might qualify? Like I remember from kind of background that this was a tree that even the rest of the fey interpreted as kind of a something to avoid. Right. So the the kind of the the heart the heartwood, the center yep. where these original growths that are probably hundreds of years old, they're all congregated together. So so it, all there. Yeah, I mean that yeah, that's you know, based on whatever mystical properties that this moss has, I mean that's where you're, you think you're going to have to go. Okay. Um and since there is a like a urgency of time mm-hmm. rooting around the whole Hollywood um, so I'll say it is not an area most of the Fey are willing to tread, either because of, you know, various philosophy, or maybe there is a legitimate fear of something that is there. I've been there a number of times just because that is where I was born, but... So you know the area well? Yes. Would it be safe to go there to, uh, in the dark, or are we... Putting our, our lives in danger. I mean, if I'm being honest, it isn't safe to go anywhere in the dark in the forest. Okay. So, no. So, what do we want? We can certainly start our way there and then camp in the meantime. Otherwise, this territory obviously has not been bothered in quite some time. Maybe because of the scare fairies that I've already taken yeah. down. So, you figure you've got a couple hours of light that you'd be wasting if you stay. That's the wasting word is, is enough to say. <laughs> well, well, no, I, no, you no, know what? I mean, these are things where you, you have to make a decision, out. right? That's it's a, you're balancing Let's the go. risk. You guys feel safer here in the forest. Anyways, we will take, if you think it's okay to at least go a little bit longer, set up camp. We will follow your instincts. Zinni and Nipper just kind of take off. Okay. I think that's decided for us. <laughs> All right, then uh, with your new treasures in tow and the first of three ingredients, the, the lot of you forge off into the forest in search of the heart tree, and we'll see if you can get there before dark or not. But that will be a story for next time. Ah, <sighs> all right, yeah, Ooh. good job, guys. We defeated, we defeated a, a cauldron. <laughs> hey, wow, you got to start first somewhere. level, right? Yeah, <laughs> and no one died. Yeah. Yeah. No one does. But I, 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 I will, I'm really confused why, why she leaves a message saying, hey, bury me under my cherry tree and then sets a cauldron upon us. Yeah. That was definitely confusing. That's why I didn't attack it to start with. I, yeah. Like, like really mixed message, you know? I mean, I assume she didn't expect people to come up and go, oh, how about they desecrate your corpse and then bury you later? Uh, Perhaps she became isolated, you know, and a little bit Hag's paranoid. gonna hag. <laughs> hag. Hag's gonna hag. <laughs> we'll never know. Yeah. You did well. I, I was, you know, I was worried about the, the damage reduction and your ability to, to overcome it. But, you know, the acid stuff was really mm. helping. And then you guys got some good wallops in there. And I was rolling really terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's always helpful. Till the end. Yeah. I mean, if, that, if it, uh, yeah. If it Speak hit, for yourself. I, if it had hit every round, that could have gone different ways. We set know? off our 20s, right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I like it. Dice giveth. Yeah. The dice take it. They take it. So. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate this. And we will, uh, awesome. we'll see you guys next week. All righty. Sounds good. Bye. All right, bye. 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 Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed our show and want more, please leave us a rating and review on whichever platform you use. And of course, feel free to share us on social media. We'll be back next week with more adventures in the world of TELUS. To tide you over, you can read more about the cast, characters, and the world of TELUS at AdventuresEdgeRPG.com. And if you're headed out on your own adventure, don't forget to search the creepy ruins for secret doors or hidden treasure.